Hello and welcome to my channel, Vice Rhino here. Today I'm looking at Matt Powell's response to Aaron Ra pointing out several lies that Matt told in his movie, Science Falsely So Called. It's rather amusing to me to watch him struggle to defend himself against being called a liar and having to lie in order to maintain that defense. So let's take a look. Hey guys, this is Matt Powell with Way of Truth. Hey Matt Powell with Way of Truth, this is Guys with Vice Rhino. I wanted to do this quick video in response to Aaron Ra's accusations to me. Um, I know he had called me a liar. He put out a video recently stating that I was just a liar and a fraudulent person. I tend to be more conservative than Aaron is when it comes to calling people liars, mainly because I feel like it requires knowing what is happening inside someone's head. Usually with creationists it is possible, however unlikely, that they are not necessarily knowingly lying and it's usually impossible to prove whether or not they know that they are repeating a lie. In this video, however, Matt demonstrates pretty conclusively that he is knowingly lying, so I will take a rare liberty in saying that you, Matt Powell, are indeed a liar. And I just want to make it clear to Aaron and to everybody in his panel and to the atheist community that uh, there were no lies spoken in that film. I may go through that movie later and point out all the misinformation that's in it, but for now I will just point to the video description, and I quote, We will also take this journey with a very well-no scientist, Dr. Kent Hovind. Hovind is not a scientist in any way, shape, or form. His degree, if it were even legitimate, is in Christian education. He claims to have taught high school science for 15 years, but even if he had, that still does not make him a scientist. That makes him a teacher. That statement is a lie. Except this is one of those cases where I would be willing to grant leniency in my use of the word liar, as it is possible that you just have no understanding of what a scientist actually is, and thinks that anyone who taught a science class must be a scientist. I wouldn't put it past you, I have seen you say things that make it clear that you have little if any understanding of science. A prime example, here's you on the Heathen Hour podcast talking about the air in space. Sure. But in space, wouldn't it be a different scenario based on the fact that, you know, the, 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 the space and the air in the space is much different than the air we have here? That's him talking about how the sun burns. And as a nice little plug for myself, in that discussion, Jackson Wheat brought up my video replying to Matt's earlier video about evolution being a fraud, and that actually caused him to change his argument from the sun would have been so big in the past that it would have engulfed the earth, to, well, how can we possibly measure how much the sun burns? We've only had telescopes for a few hundred years. And, you know, we were very honest with the evidence, and we used sources for everything. But did you use good sources? I would guess not, but I don't have any way of verifying that because if you look at the video description, do you see how many sources are listed? Zero. I see you didn't forget the buy my crap and give me money links though, because those are the most important links to include, obviously. So maybe edit that description to show which sources you used for which claims, and then we can examine the reliability of your sources. I can pretty much guarantee that they aren't reliable since you proudly display that you're working closely with well-no scientist Dr. Kent Hovind. I'll bet most of your sources are his DVDs. And in fact, we had for each claim that was made, we had at least one source to go along with the claim that was made. Okay, but just saying you had a source means nothing unless you produce that source. Quality of source materials matters. I can point you to sources that say the Earth is flat. I can point you to sources that say it's an oblate spheroid. I can point you to sources that say the Earth is hollow with the sun inside it, and sources that say it isn't. I can point you to sources that say vaccines cause autism, and sources that say it doesn't. You can find a source for anything. Just saying you have a source does nothing to lend you any credibility. You need to present that source for examination. Of course, Aaron, uh, being one of the main leaders of the atheistic movement today, has to do some damage control. <laughs> damage control. It's so cute that you think that thing you call a movie did any damage whatsoever. I wouldn't have referenced your movie if it had come out when I was a creationist. No, we pick apart your movie because it's fun. It's surprising to me that you, Matt Powell, would dedicate your life to lies with a belief system that is entirely fraudulent, such that you could hold up a compilation of lies and call that truth, and dismiss every actual factual truth as though they were lies. Actually, both of the atheists that I debated for the film uh, both held up compilations of lies 
and they were calling that truth. I'm gonna need you to provide a timestamp for that claim. I have watched your movie twice, which is two times too many, and I'll probably end up watching it at least one more time when I inevitably decide to make a response series to it. I did not see one single instance of anyone you interviewed holding up anything and calling it truth. I saw them reply to you shoving stuff at their faces, but I didn't see them referencing anything. Which means you either left them referencing their sources on the cutting room floor, or you chose people who are not the best representatives of the scientific community. I personally think it's a combination of both. And after calling them out, um, it seems that their religion turned just completely sci-fi. All of their views turned completely science fiction based, and towards the end of the movie, uh, you can see that the atheist community believes in a completely science fiction based reality. I'm pretty sure that you're referencing the clip in your movie that shows various atheists saying that life being planted on Earth by aliens is a possibility. I mean, for fuck's sake, he used the clip of Darwin from his interview in Expelled, where he is speaking entirely hypothetically. You're gonna need to learn the difference between entertaining an idea as a possibility and accepting an idea as a plausible explanation. Because there are very few people in the atheist community that I know of that actually think we were created by aliens. And here I'll give you some advice for your next movie. When you're building the atheists think we were created by aliens straw man, you're supposed to point out that this still leaves us with the question of where did the aliens come from? You failed to do that in your movie, possibly because you know we already realize this, and anyone who entertains the idea of Earth being seeded by aliens still accepts the fact that those aliens would have had to evolve, and going back far enough, probably came into being by abiogenesis. But in the end, there is no evidence to suggest that we were designed by aliens, it remains a fun hypothetical and nothing more. And many of them believe we're part of a video game system, and a lot of this stuff is just insane. So I'm pretty sure the video game system bit was paraphrased from this clip of Neil deGrasse Tyson. It's hard to argue against the possibility that all of us are not just the creation of some kid in a parent's basement programming up a world for their own entertainment. And then every time something weird happens in the world, some disruptive leader takes charge, and I wonder if that programmer just got bored. Again though, this was just a hypothetical scenario presented in a social media question. And I don't think he spends a lot of time worrying about the idea that we're in a simulation based on how he answers this just a few seconds later in that same interview. So what difference does it make if I'm programmed by someone, I guess since it, I don't know it? I guess it doesn't make any difference at all. So it's no more than just a fun hypothetical that makes no practical difference to any of our lives, and you're talking as if this is the solution we come up with to avoid accepting young earth creationism. Deceivers need believers, and ministers like yourself have to be both. Actually, I'm not a pastor. I'm not a minister. You might not be an officially ordained minister or pastor, but you certainly do preach a lot of sermons. I mean, just a quick scroll through your video page shows thumbnail after thumbnail of you at the pulpit. It definitely creates the image of you being an official sermon deliverer at your church, and usually the official sermon deliverers are ministers. The reason that I produced the film, Arn, was because I knew that people like you would come along and deceive people into believing in pond scum to people evolution and bacteria to biologists garbage. Is it a deception if it's where all the evidence points? In order to maintain a young earth creationist viewpoint, you literally have to ignore 95% or more of all science relating to biology, geology, paleontology, astronomy, cosmology, and more, and then trump up whatever science is left, which when presented out of context looks like it might be indicative of your position, but really in the broader picture is just as much evidence for deep time evolution, the Big Bang, and everything else that creationism has you denying. So to claim that my worldview is fraudulent and based on lies has no basis in reality, and anybody watching the movie can see that very clearly. Only because the guy you were talking to for most of the movie didn't have the slightest idea about most of the points you brought up. Or at least you edited it to make it look like that. Knowing how creationists usually edit things, he probably did a much better job of it before you edited it. In fact, The Raging Atheist has posted a couple videos of some of the material that didn't make it into the movie, and it seems like he knows what he's talking about at least better than you, even if I don't care much for his style. I'll leave a link to them in the video description in case anyone is interested. Let's just take a look at all the lies you told therein, and leave out all the misrepresentation, fabrication, and columnation told by convict number 0645 2017 and all the other ignorant hate mongers featured in your video. 
If anyone else wants to watch your movie, I want them to notice and confirm that every single time we see your face on screen and hear your voice, you're lying. Take a look. He was the co-founder of Evolution, so it shows that Ernst Haeckel and Charles Darwin were some of the most biased scientists on the face of the planet. You, Matt Powell, are much more biased than Darwin ever could be, so it's a bit hypocritical that you would make that accusation. Honestly, I don't know how you can say that. If you're saying that I'm biased because I believe in intelligent design, then perhaps maybe you need to look at Richard Dawkins or Neil deGrasse Tyson or other people that hold to your worldview. Richard Dawkins has been on record stating that he believes that intelligent life from another planet created mankind. If you're referring to the Expelled interview there, that's not him on record as believing that. That's him on record entertaining that as a hypothetical. Besides which, what Dawkins believes is ultimately irrelevant. If he comes out today as a young Earth creationist, evolution is still true. I do know the evidence, which you clearly do not, because it all stands against you, and it shows that you don't even care what the evidence is, which is why you lied in every single sentence you uttered in that movie so far. Instead of throwing out wild accusations, I really wish that you would just give your audience a clear example of one lie that I spoke in that entire movie. He does several times. You've already cut past at least one. Let's take a look. Here's what you played. You're lying. Take a look. He was the co-founder of Evolution, so it shows that Ernst Haeckel and Charles Darwin were some of the most biased scientists on the face of the planet. You, Matt Powell, are much more biased than Darwin ever could be, so it's a bit hypocritical that you would make that accusation. Honestly, I don't know how you can say that. Hmm. I wonder why you cut there. Let's look at Aaron's video. You're lying. Take a look. He was the co-founder of Evolution, so it shows that Ernst Haeckel and Charles Darwin were some of the most biased scientists on the face of the planet. That's three lies in two sentences. Religion is a bias by definition, but Darwin wasn't particularly religious and he certainly wasn't biased. You, Matt Powell, are much more biased than Darwin ever could be. So it's a bit hypocritical that you would make that accusation. Evolution is a process of population genetics, understood in Darwin's day as population mechanics. As such, it doesn't need a founder. Evolution was already known to be a fact for more than 100 years before Darwin discovered, or rather realized, the first working mechanism to explain it. He did decades of research to confirm his theory of common ancestry before finally having to share credit with Alfred Russell Wallace a superstitious novice who accidentally had the same idea about natural selection literally in a fever dream and without decades of study to back it up. Darwin had waited too long to publish, but this was still several years before Haeckel got involved in promoting evolution on his own. So no one founded evolution, and Haeckel wasn't involved in the formation of the theory at all. More importantly, though, Darwin was one of the least biased, least prejudiced, and most open-minded and objective scientists of his day. This is consistently and admirably reflected throughout his works, not just on the origin of species and descent of man, but right from his very first book, On the Voyage of the Beagle, where he always expressed consideration for other opinions and perspectives, and he showed how he changed his mind on different matters in each of his books. Seems pretty rock-solid and specific to me. He started by outlining what the lies were, then went into great detail explaining why they are lies. You cut out the beginning where he explained what the lies were, and just kept a small snippet of his explanation about how Darwin was not biased to make it look like he was just saying essentially, nuh uh, you're the biased one. And while he did point out that you are indeed biased, there was a lot more to it than that, which you clearly watched but felt the need to leave out of your video, almost like you're counting on people not fact checking you because you're lying. The reason that you can't is because they're not there. The reason that he can't give specific examples of you lying in this case is because you edited the many specific examples out, which means that if you were merely ignorant of the facts before and so were not lying but misinformed, you are now lying by dishonestly cutting his video where he explains the facts that you were wrong about in your movie. In fact, the lies that were spoken uh, were spoken after the film came out by people of your community accusing homeschoolers, homeschool children and a camera crew of affecting raging atheists' camera equipment and messing with his stuff. That's something that Christian homeschool kids would never do. I know that the raging atheist has made that accusation, but I don't know or care whether or not it's true. 
and being a Christian homeschool kid has nothing to do with anything here. At this point, I have for myself seen several clear examples of you demonstrably lying through deceptive video editing, so forgive me for not just assuming that you're telling the truth here. After accusing me of being biased, Aaron, why don't you take a look at your own leaders of atheism that lead it along with you, Richard Dawkins, Lawrence Krauss, and so forth, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Why don't you take a look at these men? There are no leaders of atheism. There are well-known people who are atheists, some of whom make compelling arguments in favor of atheism, but atheism itself is not tied to these leaders in the way the church is tied to its church leaders. None of these atheist leaders claim to have some sort of special knowledge which gives them the wisdom to tell other people how to live. Also, you mentioned Neil deGrasse Tyson as an atheist leader, leading atheism along with Aaron Ra. I'm pretty sure that he is an atheist himself, but this is what he had to say about the conflict of religion and science. You, you have an entire enlightened class of religious people who, for whom religion provides their spiritual fulfillment and their spiritual enlightenment, and they're not referencing their Bible, the Torah, the Quran. They're not going back to it to get an answer to their science quiz. So they're, they're drawing a line in the sand. Uh, in fact, what's the number? It's 60% of scientists in the United States pray to God. Pray. Do I say, excuse me, 40% of Western scientists, and the spread goes below that and above that, obviously, that's just the average. But that's not zero. That's my point. If it's not zero and you're a productive scientist, then the answer is there does not have to be conflict between the two because empirically there are people for whom there isn't. So that's the answer. So not much of an atheist leader in the sense that you're painting when he's clearly saying that you can be religious and be a good scientist. And if the set of that interview looks familiar, it's because it's from earlier in the same interview that you pulled his statement about living in a simulation from, meaning that you had to watch him say clearly that there is no conflict between science and religion before lumping him in with the atheist leaders. And actually, I would think that most of the atheist leaders that you mentioned would probably feel the same way. If you're doing good science, your religion doesn't matter. The science will still be good. It's interesting that when they get in interviews and they get pinned down on intelligent design, all of a sudden they, they go to a belief where they think that aliens created us or that we're in a computer machine. They come up with all sorts of wild claims. Not quite. When asked hypothetically about intelligent design, they admit that there is a possibility that aliens designed us. It's not likely and there's no evidence for it. I think you'd be hard pressed to find one of your atheist leaders who takes that idea seriously. Same with the simulation idea. That is not an answer to intelligent design. That's just a thought experiment. You can imagine in the not too distant future that we might be able to program a world inside a computer that is comparable to the real world with NPCs inside that essentially have consciousness. In their world, when technology gets to the right stage, one of them creates their own world in one of their computers, and so on. The idea being that there would be thousands, perhaps millions of simulated worlds, and only one real world. So just by random chance, which is more likely, that we are a simulation or real? Ultimately, there is no way to know for sure, and it makes no practical difference to our lives, so we may as well continue living as if we are in the real world, because for all intents and purposes, we are. You are trying desperately to make it sound like we are just throwing these ideas out there as a replacement for God, when in reality they're just things that are interesting to think about. And they'll always say, but it's not the God of the Bible. Because the God of the Bible created the universe in a way that is demonstrably not how the universe came to exist, and because the God of the Bible is internally inconsistent to the point where it can't possibly exist. Even if I grant the existence of a God, it can't be the God of the Bible because of its contradictory characteristics. And now just to clarify so you understand, I did not say that I believe in a god that is not the god of the Bible. That was hypothetically granting the existence of a god in order to make a point, nothing more. But judging by what you say about these other hypotheticals, that will probably be too much for you to understand. And according to your words, it couldn't be the god of the Bible because that's the god of the Bible. Even if there was a god, it wouldn't be your god or anything like it, because you worship the Bible god. It couldn't have been the God of the Bible who created us, because that's the God of the Bible. Yeah, I don't know. It looked like Aaron had more to say there. Is it possible that you dishonestly edited him again? Let's find out. Because you worship the Bible God. Actually, you worship the Bible. 
You worship a book that is wrong, scientifically and historically, ethically and morally. Whether God exists or not is irrelevant. Hmm, seems like he wasn't saying that it can't be the God of the Bible simply because that would be the God of the Bible. It sounds more like he's saying it can't be the God of the Bible because the Bible is wrong about so many things that its God can't possibly exist. I do know the evidence, which you clearly do not, because it all stands against you, and it shows that you don't even care what the evidence is. It's amazing that all of the evidence provided in the movie stood against you. So, you know, you're just projecting your own problems onto creationists. A half-hearted Google search on your part will show that all of the evidence that you brought up in the movie is either faked or is against your position if you look at it in its full context. For instance, you brought up the dinosaurs on the Ica stones in your movies. Within seconds of Googling, I found that they were created in the 1960s by a farmer named Basilio Ushuya. Side note, why does everyone whose name I have to say out loud have a hard-to-pronounce name? Even creationist sources readily admit that there is a souvenir market for these stones that cause new ones to be made all the time. One creationist site even got Basilio Ushuya himself to carve them a new one, pictured here. There are some legitimate Ica stones, but it is next to impossible to date the carvings on the stones unless there is extensive documentation of their discovery location, which there almost never is. The legitimate Ica stones have pictures of things like llamas and fish, not dinosaurs and UFOs. Speaking of which, why do you accept that the dinosaurs on them is proof that we live with the dinosaurs, but you don't accept the UFOs on them as proof that aliens created us? You're just denying the truth of our alien creators in your unrighteousness so that you can continue to live your non-alien approved lifestyle. Anyway, the main point here is that the Ica stones are fake, and the evidence that they are fake is strong enough that Creation Ministries International, a young earth creationist organization, has the Ica stones on their Bad Arguments website. It's very clear that your own atheist buddies don't even care what the evidence is at all says the guy who has to dishonestly edit people in order to make a point that looks half decent if you don't spend too much time thinking about it. I would like to state that everything in the movie was sourced, and everything is factual, testable, and scientific. Having a source does not make that source correct. And Aaron did an excellent job in his video demonstrating that nothing you said in your movie was factual or scientific. There's a reason why, in your response to him calling you out, you cut out 90% of his video. Because if you left it in, you'd have to issue corrections for everything you said in your movie, and as a creationist, that's something that you must never be allowed to do. The definition of science is information that's gathered off of observation. Really? So if I Google that now, I'll find the definition to be information that's gathered off of observation? Or at least something close enough to that as to make no difference? Let's see. The intellectual and practical activity encompassing the systematic study of the structure and behavior of the physical and natural world through observation and experiment. Not quite. I mean, you're not as wrong as you usually are, but science isn't itself the information, it is the activity. And if you apply this definition to the evidence in your movie, all of it falls short. Even when you use actual scientific sources, you still fall short because you leave out the vast majority of the source that you use. That is not the study of the structure and behavior of the physical and natural world through observation and experiment. That is cherry-picking parts of publications by people who are studying the structure and behavior of the physical and natural world through observation and experiment. Not the same thing at all. If we cannot even observe an animal change from kind to kind, it's not science. No, the word kind is not science, because there would need to be an actual definition of the word kind in order to test that hypothesis. If something is not falsifiable, it is not science. In other words, you have to first lay out exactly what would be required to prove your hypothesis wrong. If your hypothesis fails to be proven wrong after several experiments, it will gradually be accepted by the scientific community. There are several things which would falsify evolution by natural selection, but it has held up over time. If you can't even give a coherent definition of the word kind, then we can't even begin to know what would prove your hypothesis of animals not being able to reproduce outside of their kind wrong. And all that aside, with a modern understanding of evolution, no organism will grow out of its ancestry. That's how cladistics work. So even if you manage to nail down a definition of the word kind, it will either be something that is easily falsified, or it will be something that agrees with cladistics that we will not outgrow our ancestry. We are still eukaryote kind, just like elephants and pine trees. And as Ernst Haeckel himself said, spontaneous generation must be true, not because it had been proven in the laboratory, but because otherwise it would be necessary to believe in a creator.
Yeah, I tried to track down that quote, but I could only find it on creationist sites that looked like they were designed on GeoCities in 1996. Luckily, one actually had a source for it. Unfortunately, it seems that their source can only be found as a paper copy in the records of the University of Jena. Or Jena, not sure how to pronounce it, but I'm sure my German audience will correct me soon enough. A good chunk of my audience is German. They're my fourth biggest traffic source, behind only the US, the UK, and Canada. Anyway, back on topic, I tried searching the Jena or Jena website for it, but it doesn't look like they've scanned the probably millions of paper records that they have going back to the 1500s, so I can't verify that this quote is actually accurate. But you know what? I'll give you the benefit of the doubt and assume that it is accurate. So what? If that was Haeckel's only reason for believing in spontaneous generation, which is an old hypothesis that was discarded by the scientific community some 15 years before Haeckel supposedly uttered that quote, then Haeckel had bad reasoning for it. That says nothing to the validity of the hypothesis he was commenting on, which was indeed found to be false rather conclusively by Louis Pasteur in 1859. Unless, of course, you're doing that creationist thing where you confuse abiogenesis and spontaneous generation, which is typical of creationists and indicative of the fact that they don't care about real science, they just want to find something that looks like it agrees with them. That's it for this video, I hope you enjoyed that. Now, time for the comment of the day. This one comes to us from And Then Van Mantan. Strange choice for a name, but at least I can pronounce it. Why always the flashy metal intro? I mean, I'm not complaining because I love me some metal, but that seems like an odd choice. Well, and then Van Mantan, this is why metal. 